Hey everybody, it's David again, and welcome to an exciting video about another upgrade to Dorico Pro 6. We are now up to Dorico 6.0.2.0, aka we're the second minor upgrade for Dorico 6 since it was released earlier this year. This one adds a couple of new features that I'm pretty excited about, and I'm going to run you down the changes that they've made to Dorico Pro 6.0.2. So here we go. So when you fire up Dorico this morning, you're going to be met with your standard uh, window, which is going to show you that there is a free update to version 6.0.20, and there's more information. And if you click on it, it'll take you to Dorico's friendly website, and eventually you can get to the ever-impressive and super exciting version history that I have here, which will tell you all of the bug fixes. There's approximately 50 of them, as well as the new features in Dorico. So one of the easiest ways to get to the update itself is to open up your Steinberg download assistant and if you click on your Dorico Pro software you'll see that right there where it normally would say Dorico 6.0.1 the previous version it now has the new number and it asks me if I would like to install it because this is the new update and we have to install the new one now we will have to close Dorico 6 first so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to do the upgrade Okay, we've got Dorico installed. It took about three minutes in real time for it to actually complete. Obviously, I sped it up here in the video. So let's fire up the new version. Now, as always, when we open up a previous document, it is going to show us that message saying it was created in a previous version. Now, according to Anthony Hughes from Dorico, his favorite new feature that everyone requested was having to do with the proofreading feature in Dorico 6 but they snuck in one that I thought was even cooler, so I'm gonna start there. Now, one thing that Dorico is not great at is doing correct spelling for notes, AKA, it typically tries to enharmonically respell notes in kind of funky and weird ways. But now we have some new features for selecting specific accidentals, which will really help you get everything spelled correctly in your document. We've known for a while we could go under the filter command and we could s select all sharp notes all flat notes and we could select note ranges but now we have inside there a new set of filters notes by pitch and then you can see there all double flat all triple flat all flat all sharp all double sharp and all triple sharp if you're like me and you're inputting complicated jazz chords using your midi keyboard this is where I typically get in trouble with enharmonic spelling. So you can see in this measure of music, we have some really ugly notation. And this is not the kind of thing I would ever want to hand out to a musician. Now, technically, the second two chords are a properly spelled, fully diminished E-flat chord. However, that is not how I'd like to see that printed in music. And most players would probably look at me side-eyed with that many double flats and double sharps. So now in Dorico, though, if I was to highlight this measure of music, I could go under Edit and Filter, and I could go under Notes by Pitch, and I could select all the double flats. And you can see that it, now that it has selected my double flats, I could go ahead and hit Option Minus, which is going to spell those notes from the bottom up, a.k.a. it's going to turn the double flats into naturals, and it fixes that problem almost immediately for me. Now, because these commands are found under the edit menu, we can make custom key commands for them. And so if you're finding in your workflow that Dorico is misspelling notes and throwing in extra double sharps and double flats when you don't want them, now you could create a quick key command for grab those double sharps, and you could do it document-wide by hitting command A to select every single note in the document, and then go in and you could use the filter command to select all of your double sharps and double flats just to make sure you don't have any rogue notes hiding in your document. The next important feature here in Dorico we have is the proofreading improvements they've done. So if we open the proofreading menu here in Dorico, you can see we're met with a list 
of different items that Dorico thinks that we could improve upon. Now, the problem is these first couple, it says the stretch is too large for my guitar part. But as you can see in my guitar part, I have slash notation and I had just copied into my part some random notes from a different stave because I needed the rhythm and the articulations, but I didn't really care what the pitches were. And because they're all hidden behind slashes, no one's ever going to see them. And so there's no way in the previous versions of Dorico of just kind of getting those out of the way so that I could just kind of ignore them and make them stop bugging me about it because I'm never going to change it. And so now in the bottom right hand corner of the menu there, you'll see a little eye. And if I click on this little eye, it will actually hide that proofreading item so that I no longer have to look at it. And you can see the next one had the same problem. It said, hey, there's a stretch that's too big. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that one as well because I'm just not interested in correcting them. Now you can see they gave us two important buttons here also. They have show ignored, which allows me to go back and see those items that I ignored previously and decide if I want to correct them. And then I also have this option to clear, AKA remove the hidden feature on any of them. And if, if you click on it, you can see it says, do you want to unignore all ignored items? And I hit clear and now they're back there in my standard list. Now, for some of you, you may not have started utilizing the proofreading feature, which I really encourage you to start looking at. I think it's a really great way of catching some of the kind of normal things that we all do. One of the ones that I'm always guilty of is redoing dynamics where I'm copy and pasting things and I end up with three mezzo fortes in a row, which is totally redundant. And that's a great thing that the proofreading tool can catch for us. So another quick feature I can show you is if you had a repeated section like this that had what they call wings on your repeat, you can now go under your properties panel and you can actually show or hide the wings for an individual repeated section. So down here in the properties panel, we can see now we have this option for show wings and we can check it to yes, or we can uncheck it and we can remove them if we don't want to see them on that particular repeat. Previously in Dorico, it was kind of an all or nothing thing. We either chose it in the engrave options for all of them, or we had none of them, but now we can individually choose. Another feature they added had to do with bar numbers. So the distance of your measure range below the multi-measure rest was originally set separately from your options for how far below the stave the measure numbers were for individual measures. But now in the engrave options, you can see this distance for bar number ranges below stave. We can set this using the engraving option down here or we can check the one from layout options. And if we do that, that will make it match whatever we set for our bar number. So now all the bar numbers can be lined up horizontally underneath your score or in your part. Now there's a couple of other features I wanna talk about really quickly here in this update. The first one has to do with chord symbols. Now they've made some fixes to capo chords, which is fantastic. But they've also changed some collision avoidance issues in the automatic spacing in Dorico. Along with the previous positioning options we had in Dorico under the engrave menu, we now have this new option for avoid collisions. And again, this feature is going to help Dorico do a better job of automatically spacing our music for us. Now you can see in this Dorico part, my chord symbols are actually bumping into objects on the stave right now. You can see that this F13 is getting buried by the triplet marking on the notation. And down here where we have these whole measure rests, they are getting covered up. And this is because I turned off that avoid collisions in the engrave options. So if I go back into the engrave options under positions under chord symbols, I can turn back on the avoid collisions and you can see the Dorico now pushes all of the staves apart and it takes into consideration the chord symbols when it's doing its auto avoidance. And it will again help streamline your part formatting, which again, I like to keep everything as automatic as I possibly can in Dorico. So this is another handy feature that they added for us. One last feature I'd like to point out here in Dorico that is a little bit sneaky, but it is definitely something that comes up, which is they did an improvement to the playback engine in Dorico. 
Now, for those of us who use just the very default Dorico playback sounds, you probably would never have noticed this, but I've started using more advanced playback sounds in Dorico, which means it takes a little more processor power and a little more oomph to re-up the playback engine because it has to cycle through a lot more information to make the playback go. What this means is previously, Dorico, anytime we made a change to the playback, say we were to add a measure or we were to change an articulation which changed the type of playback signal that the playback engine was receiving, it would instantaneously go through a quick calculation to reset that. Now again, in a regular document, you never would have noticed this, but in a complex document, you'd get little hesitations and little lags that might make you think, man, my computer's running really slowly. And so what Dorico did is they actually added a new feature where Dorico will actually wait till it has a moment of idle computer time before it makes that change to your playback. This is a really small thing, but it will help Dorico seem like it's running at optimum performance even when you're using much more complicated and much more resource intensive playback sounds. Now I'm gonna be doing a video soon about how to customize your playback sounds here in Dorico. So if you've been interested in upgrading your sound playback, that'll be the video set for you. It's relatively complicated, but at the same time, it's really worth the payoff. Beyond that, you can go to the version history and check out some of the other options they've added in there. I hope you enjoyed this quick rundown of Dorico 6.0.2, and let me tell you, it's definitely worth the upgrade. So if you're already running Dorico 6, go ahead and throw on this maintenance upgrade. I think it's definitely going to be an improvement in your workflow, and these couple of little features, I think, will really help you make the most out of your documents. So thanks so much for watching, and check back for my new series on part formatting here in Dorico Pro 6. I've gotten a lot of questions about page formatting, score formatting, and other things, and it's I'm starting a new series that's going to cover a lot of this information. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.